What is going on everybody? Welcome to the 8th Python for Finance tutorial with Quantopian and Zipline. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about how we can achieve a target that we're actually looking for as far as metrics are concerned. And it's a really good practice even if the strategy just outright stinks uh, as far as what your total returns are. It's a really good idea to get comfortable with aiming for a target, maybe just one at a time and then try to aim for two or three or four and, and so on. It's a good idea to get used to doing that so that down the road when you've got a really complex strategy and but maybe one number is a little too high, maybe the, the drawdown is a bit too high, what do we do to affect a drawdown or change drawdown? Now with drawdown, you can usually affect your drawdown by having extreme stop loss, okay? And that's in both your investing in, in specific companies or also the running of your algorithm at all. If you've got a drawdown that just keeps ticking down, you can always just pause. All right, and take a breather and then re-enter the market and that'll help your drawdown as well. A lot of people want to always be invested and always be trading. It's not necessarily the best idea, but people treat investing and trading a lot like gambling. They just, it's like a game. They just want to play it. So, uh, you know, keep your eye out for that mistake. Now, uh, so the first thing that we want to do is we're going to achieve, or we're going to try at least to achieve a beta that is between negative 0.3 and positive 0.3. So this is a comp or this is a strategy that is mostly irrespective of the market, but not totally. Obviously, a zero would be great. Uh, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to incorporate shorting of companies. Uh, and the idea there is that if we're going to be to act irrespective of the market, why don't we oppose the market at certain points? And then bam, you should lower your beta. So let's go ahead and go back, and this script is called Fundamentals Tutorial. I think we're going to change that now. So we'll just call this uh, Quantopian Tutorial. The particularness in me made me change that. So now what we're going to go ahead and do, and in fact, we're not even going to, let's just make a new one. So we'll, um, now nah, we'll just, we'll just re rewrite this one. So let's, uh, let's delete this and we're not going to have a before trading start. This will be a really simple algorithm actually. And so we can actually, so we can build on top of this one. So initialize context and then we've got handle data. So initialize, what we're going to do is we're going to trade, uh, sectors. And the way that we're going to trade sectors is using the spider fund sectors. So or the spider funds that are based on sectors. So there's quite a few, so we'll, let's just uh, go through them. You can just follow along, I suppose. There's actually only like nine. So uh, let's go. So we're gonna say context.stocks. So again, this will be our universe equals symbols. And then we're gonna just throw in the symbols. And in fact, I think there might be one in the docs and we can maybe save ourselves some time possibly. Let's go to Quantopian, uh, this help here, and do a control F for X, L, Y. There it is, beautiful. So let's go ahead and take this right here uh, and just go to symbols. We'll copy that, come over to the fundamentals tutorial here, and uh, or still calling itself fundamentals, but it's Quantopian tutorial now. Uh, and then symbols, replace symbols here, just paste and bam. So now we have our tickers. So you can just look, you know, so we've got the consumer discretionary, you've got financial sector, tech sector, energy, healthcare, industry, consumers, materials, and utilities. So these are our sectors and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes, nine total sectors. So now that we have our sectors, how are we going to invest based on these sectors? Well, there's a whole lot of ways that we can, you know, uh, buy and sell and all of this based on all kinds of parameters. Uh, but let's go back to our initial moving average crossovers. So the moving average crossovers is helps us with trends. So as long as uh, the market trends, this is a good strategy, <laughs> okay? Uh, but as long, but if the market doesn't trend or the market goes what's called sideways, where it just kind of goes sideways or it just goes up or just goes down, this strategy is gonna underperform. But if we have moments of trending up and moments of trending down, this strategy should do pretty well. And let's say over the course of the last uh, few decades, um, we've actually had some pretty good squigglies going on. But if you only consider, so let me, uh, let's pull over actually, let me uh, pull up the S&P. So let's do S&P 500. 
So we search for the S&P 500 just in Google, and here you go. So let's say in the last five years, what has mostly happened in the last five years? Well, I mean, there's a trend here, and it went up, and then a short trend down. But mainly, this is a trend up in the last five years. How about max? Okay, so what if we did maybe from 1995 to 2015, right? Well, in this case, we trend up, we trend down. We trend up, we trend down. We trend up, and we might very well trend down eventually. And with uh, Quantopian, they have data from 2002 uh, onward. So let's go Google Finance here, and let's pull up from 2002. I wonder if I can. Yes, I can. Uh, so let's do delete, delete, 2002. I thought that was going to look a lot more interesting. But anyway, you can see that, indeed, it's trending up. And I'm advertising for Victoria's Secret. Let's just do this. There we go. <laughs> anyway, trending up. You buy, like, one thing on Victoria's Secret, by the way, and they will just advertise to you for, like, the next six months, you know? <laughs> anyway, trending up. Uh, and then it trends down and then trends up again. So in theory, this should be an okay example. We've got two uptrends, one downtrend. So, you know, who knows? But anyway, let's see if we can call, if we can make a, sc a script basically that will, will play these trends. So moving this over here, what we're going to do, and since we're playing like long-term trends, you want to take into consideration long-term trends as you're making your moving averages that will be used to cross over. So... <laughs> Anyway, in the handle data, what we're going to do is we're going to say for stock in context.stocks. So for the stocks that we're willing to trade, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a moving average one and an MA2 like we did before. And this will be the data and then stock. And then we'll use dot mavj. Uh, and we'll do a 50 moving average for the first one. And then for the second one, we're going to do a 200 moving average. Then what we're going to do is we're going to reference the price, the current price, whatever that happens to be, and that will be data stock dot price, easy peasy. Then we ask some simple questions. If the MA1 is greater than the MA2, this means we're detecting an upward trend. If the MA1 is greater than the MA2, we're going to order underscore target and actually let's do order target percent so we're going to order target percent of that stock and our target percent will be uh 0 0.11 just for the record it's kind of confusing when you think of percent i want to order 11 percent so it's tempting to put an 11 in here but no don't do that <laughs> you'll be ordering a massive amount of the company it's not really a percentage, it's a 0 0.11, it's a decimal, but anyway, uh, I wish that was a little more clear. The first time I tried using order target percent, I was doing like 50%, I think, <laughs> and there's like massive buy came through, and I just didn't understand why. Anyway, if that's the case, we order that percent. Elif, MA2, uh, or let's do MA1 is less than MA2. Then we want to do an order underscore target underscore percent of that stock as 0 0.11 again, but this time it's a negative 11. So this means we're going to short that company. And honestly, that's it for our logic. Super, super easy logical uh, script here <laughs> because we're using order target percent. So this will just automatically handle all the problems that we could possibly have. And because we're using a percentage, even though we're using a negative percentage here, we don't have to worry about does it add up to 100%. Uh, at any given time, we should only be invested 99%. So let's go ahead and let's run this back test and let's use everything Quantopian has to offer. I think they started on Jan 1st, 2002 as far as their data is concerned. And we're going to stick with daily data because this script is a daily data script. Uh, so for example, we're using a moving average of 50. Well, that 50 is applying to the bars of data. So that's 50 days. If we did minutes, it would only be a 50 minute. Now we could do that because there are fluctuations over the course. And you can try it on in minute data if you'd like. But let's do just the daily data here. Uh, so let's run the full back test. We'll start with a million dollars. No problem. It's really easy to get your hands on a million dollars nowadays. So practically just stumble over it walking along the street, you know. So right away, we can see we've got a negative beta here. And you can even see that we've kind of defied the market. 
And then here, as the market's trending upward, we're like, hey, yeah, we're we're bullish on the market. So we trend up with the market. And then here, we're kind of failing pretty much because the market's trending up, but pretty slow. And now it's going sideways. So we do pretty bad. It's trending up in it's trending up and probably here we detected uh, that the market was crashing and we were wrong and then we're right about to crash from the housing crisis. Bam, housing crisis hits. We do very well in the housing crisis. Uh, and we can look, our beta is still not quite in the target that we want, but I think we're gonna get there. Uh, because right now we're in the negatives, but I think uh, in this next uptrend we'll, we'll, do, we'll get our closer. And here we go, actually getting into the closer. So we're going sideways. We're almost to where we need to be in the beta. So close. Our sharp ratio stinks, but that's okay. And betas, now we're in range and we're done. Cool. So our total returns 85.7 compared to the benchmark of 130.1, but that's okay. That's okay because our beta is pretty good. But then if we look at our max drawdown, 33.1% drawdown. But um, I'm not sure what the actual drawdown is for uh, for the S&P 500 in that same time. The drawdown should be pretty significant, though, because that, that's from the crash. Let's see if I can get there. Yeah, it's definitely more than... I'm going to pull it up for you guys in a second. Right, so the max drawdown for the market between you know 2007 and 2009 from its highest high and then it falls all the way down here that drawdown there is minus 46.21 so that's a pretty significant drawdown uh so all the people that were invested in that time that's how why everyone was in serious trouble because almost everyone was worth half of what they were worth initially so there you go we've achieved our beta target because we directly defied the market in multiple places initially we did it here uh, we did it again here and we failed, but that's okay. It helped us lower our beta. And then uh, we did it again here to great success. Uh, and again, in a few other places. Uh, but we were able to now, now we've got a, a negative 0.27. So that's pretty good. Sharp ratio, however, stinks. Maybe we should include a stop loss here to kind of maybe dec decrease the risk a little bit. Uh, and basically you can all, generally the sharp and max drawdown will kind of go together. Chances are if we could get our drawdown down <laughs> to a lesser number, we would also see our sharp ratio uh, improve quite a bit and volatility would also improve quite a bit. So anyway, uh, that's it for now. We've uh, achieved basically our target uh, that we were looking for, and that's kind of how you would do it. And again, now you might want to add some stop losses here. Uh, maybe you want to invest in other sectors, or maybe you want to invest in sectors differently or, or, or value your portfolio differently in different sectors and stuff. But you do have to be careful. We've had a, quite a big technology boom, and if you're taking your bias back you know, 10 years saying, oh, I just know there's going to be a technology boom when really after the dot-com bubble, everybody was very weary of technology booms. So chances are you wouldn't have made that call. Uh, but anyway, keep that in mind. Don't make those kind of assumptions. Now, up until this point, we've been using information that is only available on Quantopian, which is great. Quantopian has a ton of data, but they don't have everything, right? Uh, there's just no way for them to get all of the data they could possibly want. Or like, what if you, for example, want to trade or want to backtest Bitcoin trades? Okay. You can't do that on Quantopian yet new with Quantopian data. But what you can do is use, they have a, uh, a method for fetching CSV files. So you can have any CSV file, you can get it fetched and you can work with that data. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial is fetching data. And I can't think of better data to fetch than sentiment analysis data. So that's what we're going to fetch is sentiment data from my other company, Centex. And we'll see how that fares, but also we'll learn about uh, the CSV fetcher and how we can use that with our backtesting. So anyways, stay tuned for that. If you've got questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support of subscriptions. And until next time.